name is Alicia Moulton with The Honey Company and today I'd like to talk to you about beehives. We sell a lot of beehives to beginning beekeepers in the spring and I'd like to use this video to answer the most common questions that we, we receive. I'd, I'll also go through the hive component by component and talk about each one. We choose to use Langstroth hives in our operation we think that bees don't really mind what hive they're in. They can build hives in anything from a hollow log to your neighbor's air conditioning unit to a box that we provide for them. And so we want to choose the hive that's the easiest for us as beekeepers to, to use and to manage. We also believe in using natural comb production. So we have some really cool modifications that allow you to use a standard Langstroth hive with foundationless frames. Langstroth boxes come in several sizes. This, these boxes here are deep Langstroth boxes. They also come in a shallow box, a medium box, and a jumbo box, which is even deeper than this. We choose the deeps because they require less equipment for us to store in the winter when we're not using it and because they're standard in the beekeeping industry. Uh, some people prefer medium boxes because they're lighter weight than the deeps are. Um, and if that's a concern for you, then choose medium hives for sure. Whatever size you choose, we recommend using the same size boxes throughout the hive. Um, it's a pretty common practice to have two deep boxes and then smaller boxes on top of that and we recommend just using all the same size boxes throughout the whole hive. It, it makes our operation a lot easier um, especially when we store our boxes. We only have one size box and one size frame and they're all interchangeable among all of our hives. Uh, we recommend that for you as well. First and on the bottom we have a bottom board. This is the base of the hive and it's where the boxes sit. This bottom board is a solid bottom board. It's made out of plywood here and then kind of raised up down here and it has three raised edges here and an open fourth edge to give an entrance for the bees along the bottom of the hive. We choose to use a solid bottom board rather than a screened bottom board because, well, in a screened bottom board there can be a draft um, even with the insert in place and it can harm the bees when it's cool weather or cold. Um, and they find that having the screen bottom board isn't that um, helpful in preventing Varroa mites, which is often the reason that people are choosing to use a screened bottom board um, as part of a mite pre prevention program. But the research has shown that Varroa mites aren't really that affected by um, a screened bottom board. So we stick with the solid one. This is a box. Um, you will often hear it called a box or a hive body or a deep or a medium or a shallow by the name, the size of the box. It's hollow through and holds 10 frames typically. Some people run nine, but typically 10. And um, typically you have the bottom two boxes you'd call um, the hive body and any additional boxes that you stock, stack on top of that would be called supers. Our boxes are built with the rough side of the wood in and then the smooth side of the wood, the plain side out. And this will encourage the bees to produce propolis, which is beneficial to their disease resistance. Typically, you would start a hive with the bottom board a box with frames and then the lid and they would live in there until it's almost full at which point you'd add a second box and then when that's full you continue adding boxes as needed throughout the summer. This is a frame. Typically 10 frames fit into a standard Langstroth box. This is a special deep middle bar frame. We love this frame because it allows bees to build foundationless um, comb and it, these middle bars will support the weight of that comb when it's full. It can be quite heavy and without this support the comb can collapse in a deep frame. It's just too much comb. In the past they used to string their frames 
with wire um, throughout the frame and that would support the comb. But then you have comb wire in the middle of your comb, which isn't always what you want. So we like the middle of our frames because it provides the support that you need without wires. This, by the way, is a jumbo frame. In the U.S. we typically don't use jumbo frames, but in other parts of the world they're fairly common. This is a deep Langstroth frame with foundation. This foundation is plastic foundation and it's stamped with this hexagon shape and then sprayed with a light covering of beeswax. The beeswax makes this um, sheet attractive to the bees. They're not very attractive to plain plastic, so they add the wax to help encourage them to draw comb. This is a medium frame. It's a me medium foundationless frame. Typically this depth is nice for foundationless beekeeping because the frame is shallow enough that there's enough support just from the frame alone and you don't need any middle bars or anything like that. Here is a medium frame with foundation, the same plastic foundation and the stamped hexagons. You can see that that's shallower than this box. Um, we wouldn't use medium or shallow frames in a deep box because they can, bees will build comb down below in this space and it makes a big mess. So in a deep box, we'd want to use deep frames, but this is just to illustrate the different sizes available. Lastly, we have a shallow frame here. Um, this frame can be used with foundation. You can see these grooves are ready to snap the foundation in place, but you don't really need to. You can do um, this frame foundationless and it will support the weight of the comb just fine. So back to our deep middle bar frame. We think that foundationless beekeeping is the way to go. We don't like having other people's wax in our hives. We don't know what is in the wax and so we like the bees to be able to start fresh on new frames with no foundation, nobody else's wax in there and keep the plastic out and um, let the bees kind of do their thing. They actually draw comb more quickly without foundation than they do with it. So I'll show you some examples of drawn comb on this middle bar frame. Here's some that they've the bees have worked on. They start working on several spots at once and they just build it down and across and uh, until the whole frame is filled. With. Once it's full, they fill the hexagon cells with honey. So you can see this is a pretty full frame. It's a middle bar frame um, and they filled it with honey and then capped over the top. You can see these white, thin, like kind of cloudy looking cappings and those those are what the bees do when the honey's ready to harvest when it's cured and um, finished ready to store this frame is nice because we could uncap the top white cappings and spin it in a centrifuge extractor or we could cut comb from this frame so we could cut four by four se square sections of comb and then sell them as honeycomb as well. And that's a good alternative to purchasing an expensive extractor to just harvest and consume the honeycomb. Um, but if we did put it in the extractor, we could spin out the honey and then place the empty comb back into the hive for the bees to fill up again. The final part of the hive is the lid. And this is just um, a plywood lid and it has some uh, risers here and then um, two end pieces. And this end piece has a hole cut into it. It's kind of a groove. <coughs> in the summer, this acts as an upper entrance to the hive. And in the winter, it lets out the excess moisture so that the bees can stay dry in the winter. If they can stay dry, then they can generate enough heat and be pretty warm in their hive. This is a, another type of lid that we like to use. It's kind of a fancier lid. It's the same design essentially as the other one. Maybe not the risers on this one, but uh, it has the same ventilation hole. And then it has metal on the top. And that's just kind of an extra bonus. It makes it look pretty sharp. Um, and 
just a, an attractive version. It pre preserves the wood a little bit better with the metal. It costs a little bit more, but it's an option that you can explore if you'd like. There are two types of lids to a hive, typically. This one is a migratory style lid, and you can see that it's flush along the sides of the box, and so that makes it so that it's easier for beekeepers to stack several hives on a truck and move them around for pollination and other things. They also make a telescoping lid, which kind of comes down around the box on all four sides. Um, we typically prefer the migratory style lids. They're less expensive typically, and they will remove bees around, so that's what we like. There are several types of beehives in existence. You know, there are, this Langstroth hive is only one of them. There are another popular type of hive is a top bar hive. And that could be a really great hive. The advantage to the top bar hive is that the bees always make their own natural comb. However, they can be a little bit challenging as the hive expands. And that is actually a very important principle of beekeeping um, room for expansion because once the top bar hive is full, then you would either need to quickly extract honey or you'd need to split the colony. If you don't, then the hive may swarm. And then you'll be up a tree 50 feet in the air trying to get that hive back into a box. We recommend that beginners begin with a Langstroth hive and then once they get their feet wet a little bit with beekeeping, they can experiment with a top bar hive. Thank you for watching today. Come visit us at thehoneycompany.com.